Hot stinking mess. Hot stinking mess. Hot stinking mess. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kennedy. If you're new here, if you're not new, hey girl, how have you been? Welcome back to another true crime and makeup video. Today's video involves grenades. Yeah, are you ready? It's a lot. Buckle up. I'm not going to hold you <laughs> for too long. We can go ahead and hop into today's case. Just make sure you subscribe before you leave. I almost forgot to say that. Subscribe. Subscribe. Mm -hmm. If this was your first time here. You think I'd get tired of eating cake, but I literally never do. Okay, let's hop right into today's case. We'll do a more formal introduction when we get our makeup done. We're still test running makeup for the Meg Thee Stallion concert. I'm feeling a oh nasty cat eye, okay? So that's what we're gonna attempt. I always watch one video when I want like a smoky liner. If I don't watch the video, I can't do it right. So I'll link the tutorial in the uh, description. But if I don't watch the video first, I won't. Like, I never can do it without the video. Matter of fact, oh, I kicked the camera, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> I was about to say, matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows while I rewatch this tutorial. And then we can hop into the cake. <sighs> the tutorial I always watch is gone. I'm about to have a fit. What happened to my girl? I can't even remember her name. I used to always watch the video. No tutorial is crazy. None of these other videos look like how she did hers. I don't want to try nothing new. Oh, well, no tutorial. I guess we could just start the case. Oh, gosh. It's not going to come out right. All right, guys. So for today's case, we are getting to know James Glass, who was... A career Marine had been in the Ooh, can we talk? Get it out. Had been in the Marines since the age of 24. As we get into the events of today's case, we're gonna start with a little bit of background because I feel it's pertinent to what happens in today's case. But James grew up kind of tough at just five years old. He was removed from his mother's custody because she had recently lost their father. Their father passed away when the kids were very young and she got into a relationship with a man who was very abusive. In more ways than one, James and his little brother weren't eating and it was so bad that a school teacher noticed what was going on, noticed the changes in the boys and asked them what exactly was happening at home. And luckily for the boys, James and his brother, the system did right by them. They were removed from the home that they shared with their mother and her new man and placed into foster care by a family who eventually adopted both of them and grew up normally, you could say, after being removed from their mother's care. But when it came down to, you know, raising a family, being a father and that family unit, James, who went by the name of Houston to fellow Marines, knew what he did and didn't want when it came to like his family dynamic, his family unit, you know, things like that. And y'all know Marines are very disciplined. Like it's like a different type of shit to be a Marine. I had a teacher in high school who was a Marine and he was also a doctor. Extremely disciplined. So he was in the Marines, hopping all over the country, stationed here and there, all over the place. You know, he was dedicated to being a military man. Is it, is Marines, I don't know, y'all know I never know. I always be confused by that. Child, you know what I'm trying to say? He was in Marines and very dedicated to his career. And in 1989, he goes home on a little leave, back home to his parents, his family, and he hops in the car with his father, who is headed to a dealership to look at a new vehicle. And it's on this little trip that he meets a woman by the name of Wendy McAdory, who would eventually become his wife and mother of his two daughters. They have their first baby in 1991. 
and then their second in 1993 like I said both daughters and he was just smitten head over heels you know just adored all three of the girls Wendy and their two daughters this was exactly what he wanted exactly what he knew he wanted from a little boy but the family gets a little shaken up in 1995 when he is stationed in Japan so they all have to pick up and move with a one-year-old I can't imagine because y'all know like I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or the more motherly I get with age but the more I think about it the more a one-year-old still is kind of pretty much a newborn like some one-year-olds don't even sleep through the night you know now you got to move across the globe then not only were they stationed in Japan but this is where they were stationed and from there James would be deployed to other places while they're in Japan I didn't know it worked like that I really didn't know that's a lot Okay, we're gonna do one eye at a time because I can't lie. Without the tutorial, I don't have much faith in myself because I really don't remember how to do it. <laughs> like her tutorial is just so thorough. But with James stationed in different places and alone in Japan with the two girls, Wendy finds other ways to occupy her time, if you know what I mean. So she starts having an affair but luckily for her everyone seems to just mind their business and james can't see the snake that's biting them because like i said he was deployed and he never really gets the chance to figure it out because shortly after being stationed in japan they're reassigned to yuma arizona and little did Jason know he was leaving Wendy's one affair in Japan and they were moving right next door to her next affair in Yuma. They were stationed right next door to the man that she would be sleeping with next. Hot stankin' mess. Hot stankin' mess. Hot stankin' mess. So their neighbors are Larry and Shelly Framness. Larry and Shelly also had daughters who were around the same age as the glass girls so they spent a lot of time together so let's go back a little bit they're married for a while living in bliss moves to japan stationed there for a while then they're stationed in yuma arizona and james is already busy with work right very dedicated to being a marine and moving up but then 9 11 happens right and he gets deployed again. And he is deployed, not stationed, just deployed to Kuwait. And remember, Wendy is living on base, surrounded by other military personnel. Fellow Marines and their wives start to notice Larry and Wendy spending more time together. Larry being over at Wendy's house a lot. And y'all know, we know all this chucking and jiving, sleeping with other people's wives and husbands. And the military is very much illegal. Adultery is a no-go in the military. And so when things start to get a little fishy, the two of them are reported and they're actually reported by Shelly Framness. She notices. And her claims are taken obviously very seriously, but they decide to investigate further once James is back stateside see this don't look how I wanted to and I'm mad like where is the tutorial but when James is asked about a possible affair he says you know there's no way I don't believe that and without him being willing to escalate the situation there's no investigation done into Framness and Shelley's dealings with each other this is going down in march of 2002 okay so the investigation is dropped but then james gets a first-hand account of what his wife and larry framness have been up to like i said he's done with his deployment this brings us to march 2002 and james 
decides to surprise Wendy on his lunch break and come home early. He says he goes upstairs and he can hear like rustling around in their bedroom. But before he can push the door open, Wendy comes to the door and she's not wearing much clothing. And he's like, what is going on? And she not trying to let him in the house or in the bedroom rather. And he kind of like pushes past her. What the hell is going on between the sheets in my home? Okay. But he pushes into the bedroom and he sees Larry Framness on the floor on the other side of their bed trying to hide. He luckily had taken the time to get dressed. Before risking his career and going to jail, James gets in his car and he drives off and he contemplates on what he wants to do if he wants to turn them in. But James knew that would mean Wendy would be kicked off base for the adultery. And in turn, she would take his girls with them, with her. And James did not want that to happen. So he went back to the home and he decided, you know, that they would settle it amongst themselves without escalating the matter. Wendy says it's because he was deployed. He was never home. He was also deployed at the time that her mother passed away. And her mother was like the support system she needed when he was deployed. So losing her mother and not having James home was very hard for her. And she said it drove her into the arms of another man. But what about the first time? What about the first time you cheated? I'm genuinely curious. Did somebody die in too? Genuinely, genuinely asking. I'm not being a bitch, I swear to God. But what the first time, why? I just don't understand cheating in general especially with larry framness like you putting your whole career on the line for some coochie you can get coochie from anywhere your wife or divorce your wife but like you have to go through so much to become a marine marine and move up the ranks and you put that on the line for some coochie men are so weak honestly because like your military background, especially when you're, because is that a dishonorable discharge? I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not going to look it up. But your mil military background doesn't really transfer to real the real world. Like you can't take your military resume to a job and get a good job, right? Like that don't really work the same, correct? So like you're really giving up a lot. Your livelihood The mail always runs and I feel like the lady always has a package to bring all the way up to the door whenever I'm filming. And I just know she hears the most outlandish stuff. Like, did she just hear me screaming coochie three times? Probably, probably. But I don't know, maybe I'm just confused about the cheating thing because I've just never had the urge to cheat. Like if I don't want you, I'm gonna tell you I don't want you and move on. I don't know. I just never understood cheating. As a grown person with free will, why are we going by? You know what? It's not for me to understand. But I can definitely understand James keeping the adultery under wraps for the sake of his daughters and being able to come home to his kids every day, you know? But Miss Shelly Framness, mm mm. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. She said, I don't know what the fuck y'all got going on. And y'all over here like the Brady Bunch. Me and my turn, we want to get the fuck. And she moves to Montana with her kids and gets a divorce. But the two of them work on their marriage. They go to counseling. They put in the work. And things seem to be getting better. James is deployed again. But when he returns home, he's willing to drive up the mountain to save his marriage and they quite literally do that i know some people out there don't get the references cultural differences but i know the girls that got that got that anyway they quite literally drive up the mountain to save their marriage they go up to some mountains a little cabin town to have some alone time right off of his did y'all hear the birds right off of his last deployment they go up to the mountain, stay in a little cute cabin, but because it's, but remember this is right off of his deployment. So he's severely jet lagged. 
and just not having the best time because he's just tired you know and his severe jet lag probably saved his life but we'll get back to that in a second okay because he unknowingly on this little mountain trip was surviving one of several attempts made on his life mm -hmm. and shortly after james is sent back to kuwait and as he is sent back to kuwait trying to mind his business um do what he gotta do before he can come back home his good friend larry is also stationed in kuwait messy very messy and james was originally happy that larry was also stationed in kuwait because obviously they can't continue their affair so you would think with larry also in kuwait right you would think but distance don't really stop people from being trifling you know and i'm about to tell you just how they did it but you know stationed in kuwait larry's pp is as far away from wendy as it could possibly be they decide to you know let bygones be bygones and focus on the task at hand let work be work they were both in positions of authority you know they needed to present a united front to their subordinates is that the right word to use and this brings us to may 13th of 2003 during the day of the 13th, Larry had told James that they needed to look into something, that there was reports of two Marines getting together and doing stuff they had no business doing because they too were married to other people in a guard shack every night, right? Crazy as him to be the one to discover these people. But Larry tells James like, hey, I need you to come out there and stake out the guard shack with me so we can catch them in the act. And that way it just won't be my word against theirs. Like it'll be both of us there to witness it. So they do just that at around 11 o'clock that night, Larry goes to get James so they could wait it out at the guard shack. So they're in this little guard shack, waiting for Ish to pop off for these um, two Marines to come in and they could have their gotcha moment, but that moment never came. So Larry tells James, well, let me go see if they uh, you know, are in their bunk. Let me go scope the scenery. You stay here in case they come back. And then boom, the guard shack explodes. I wish I was being dramatic. A grenade went off inside of the guard shack. Yeah, a grenade, mm -hmm. a grenade, a grenade, a grenade, a grenade, a grenade, a grenade, uh-huh. A grenade yeah but by God's grace this man James is not blown to smithereens well he is blown to smithereens lots of shrapnel he has to be um, airlifted to Spain but he's alive he walks himself out of the guard shack totally beaten up shrapnel in his neck he had been blown across the guard shack he said in an interview with CBS. His wrist had to be reconstructed, tons of lacerations. I mean, he's really badly beaten up, but child, the Marine in him picked this up up and walked him out of that guard shack. And seemingly he survived because the grenade had rolled behind a pallet stacked up high of water that they had in this guard shack and the pallet stacked up high of water took the brunt of the force and of course this random single grenade explosion is very strange of course and immediately looked into and obviously they talked to larry because he was the only person there and Larry tells them people that it was Al-Qaeda, okay? It was Al-Qaeda, it was Al-Qaeda, that's what he says. But baby, they came and blew up one person? That don't really make sense now, does it? He would have been better off saying he ain't know what the hell here. You know what I'm saying? But he a child, he blamed the brown people. That's another conversation for another day. But 
nobody's buying that it doesn't make sense you know i mean to say we were out here because of the 9 11 attacks and they decided to come with one grenade that don't really make sense now do it one grenade after the twin towers and the pentagon say something that makes sense please quickly quickly and eventually larry does confess to throwing the grenade but at first he says it was a joke. The grenade was not supposed to go off. They don't believe that and they want to give him time to sit in his shit, you know? So they decide to go to his barrack and sneak through his stuff and read his emails, right? And first of all, before they can even get to the emails, honey, they look through his belongings and find A notebook where he was keeping inappropriate pictures of Wendy folded up in his notebook I want to say something inappropriate about the notebook but um, my mom would be watching me let's just say I wouldn't have wanted to be the one to collect that evidence you know gross so they go back to talk to Larry and he gives a full confession he said that instead of divorcing Wendy wanted him dead because she had a half a million in life insurance on James, okay? Not only did she have the half a million, but she was trying to add 150000 to it, right? But because James was active Marines and because of what had happened with the 9-11 attacks, um, life insurance companies were not increasing life insurance for active duty military personnel. So she had to settle with the half a million dollars but with larry giving a full confession they send someone out to talk to wendy and when they roll up on wendy she's in the backyard burning documents yeah <laughs> so they literally catch her in the act of trying to get rid of evidence but they do find a little list that Wendy was working on and this list at the top was the full amount of life insurance she would have gotten after James's death minus all of the things she wanted to spend the money on four wheelers trailers a new suburban but nini nini boo boo James survived and uh, when they talked to her she originally denies 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 but then when they crack open these emails and see that you know they were talking about killing him plain as day in the emails that plan b was divorced if the murder attempts didn't work out and um uh, so they find out going up the mountain to save their marriage was also a murder attempt okay um the plan was to get him up to the top of the mountain give him the date rape drug that's why he was sleepy and uh, the whole time not feeling well they were going to give him the date rape drug and get him drunk put him behind the wheel of their vehicle and then drive him off a cliff yeah that was their plan to get him drunk enough to drive himself off a cliff They also planned on drugging him again and then having him drown in the bathtub. And not only did they plan on drugging him and having him drown in the bathtub, but they planned on sending his children in to find his body. All of that is in these emails. Hell ain't had enough. I mean, but this case is just insane. I think throwing a grenade at somebody is probably one of the craziest true crime things we've heard so far. Bitch, a grenade? But since the both of them pretty much confess, okay, Larry is sentenced to 25 to life. And I'm sure his wife is glad she got, got out of there and went to Montana because they probably would have tried to kill her too. Miss Wendy is sentenced to seven. Obviously, James gets a, a divorce. He is now remarried. And in an interview with CBS, he says he didn't realize how much he was manipulated by Wendy until he was remarried and, you know, found true love. And Wendy was released from prison in 2010. 
And my question to you is, what would you do if your new husband, new boo, new man, told you that his ex-wife tried to kill him three times? What's the next step? And you would think after trying to kill somebody twice and then not working, you would give up, correct? Well, I guess not in Wendy and Larry's case, you know, they decided to strike out and lose everything in the process, child. And it just always baffles me that people would rather add murderer to their resume instead of getting a divorce. Uh, I don't get it. But that is a wrap on today's case. Of course, as always, leave your thoughts, comments, and opinions in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. So Bianca Ellis admitted to taking someone else's life three months ago. Bianca is the girl who took three-year-old Julian Wood's life outside of a grocery store just a couple of days ago. Yet she was allowed to just roam the streets the amount of times that this lady has been let go. Let me tell y'all. First, she had a warrant for probation violation in Ohio for misdemeanor theft charges. That was in 2023, but February of this year, she had a warrant in California for battery of a person. From there, she ended up back from California to Ohio in a women's shelter where she admitted to, well, she said she wanted to speak to the police because she had took somebody's life back in California. And so the people at the shelter called the police and told them this woman here wants to admit to taking somebody's life. So she gets on the phone, she tells the police that she took somebody's life in Bakersville, California. She was a white woman, five foot six, about 150 pounds, worked at a bar or was a bartender. She also said she dumped the body in an unknown area, possibly by a river, and she didn't know if the body had been found. So Ohio police called Bakersville, California police detectives, and they said they had several unsolved homicide cases that were similar to what she described, but she wasn't a suspect on neither of those cases. She then goes on to tell the police that if she wasn't taken to jail, she was gonna take somebody's life at that shelter and that she wanted to take somebody's life and eat their flesh. So um, California police said, we're not coming to get you. Ohio police said, we're not coming to get you to take you to jail but we will take you to a mental hospital. And that's what they did. But while she was at that hospital, she began to act out and wanted to fight the nurses, the doctors, even the police. They had to sedate her for her own safety and for their safety. At some point she was let out, then she ends up in Florida where she was arrested again for trespassing because she refused to leave the hotel. She was just hanging out at a hotel and would not leave. So she's arrested for trespassing. She's released and she finds her way back to Ohio, where she's arrested for a theft again, I believe, but she's released, and a couple days later, she goes and takes Julian's life at that grocery store. Now, I believe there is a possibility that her taking somebody's life in California could be true, or it could just be all made up in our head. But she did warn them that if you don't put me in jail, I'm gonna take somebody's life, and that's what she did. Her next court appearance is June the 17th, so maybe something else will come out then.